Hi guys, Craig here from Out There Touring. Um, today's video is going to be on my experience with my 12 volt system. If you followed me on uh, Facebook or Instagram, you'll know I had some dramas. But again, this is my experience. Um, so I'm just going to talk you through that and let you know where I'm up to now with the system. So let's open it up and have a look. Just to step back and talk through my personal scenario. Um, end of May, roughly, I purchased the whole unit. 240 amp uh, lithium battery, a control hub uh, with the 40 amp DC to DC on it, 2000 watt inverter, 40 amp AC um, charger, and also the smart shunt, which I've got the display on the other side near the fridge. You've probably seen the video where I did the complete install. Um, now, probably about six or seven weeks after that, uh, I found that I had no power um, to the fridge. I rang iTech World, a number of emails between me and them regarding, um, I had to recalibrate this, um, indicator to the smart shunt, I had to recharge the battery completely. So I recharged the battery overnight, got it up to 100%. Over the next day or two, um, that percentage dropped, even though I was parked in full sunlight or I'd been driving for an hour or two. So I contacted iTech World again, um, and this now we're talking early July. And early September, I was heading off for the Cape York trip. So after a conversation with iTech World, uh, they said for me to send the control hub back to them. And would take two to three weeks uh, for them to diagnose and advise me of uh, what was wrong or what the pathway was. There was no guarantee that I could have the control hub replaced or returned to me and fitted prior to me going Cape York trip. So this left me in the position um, of uncertainty as far as I was about to head off on a trip that I'd had planned for 12 months and they couldn't guarantee that the unit would be repaired or replaced and returned to me in that time frame before I went away. So that left me in a position um, where I had no other choice but to order another control hub, um, pay for it up front, and hope that they would uh, refund me on the original control hub. So a couple of weeks ago, I put a post up saying that I had some issues with the new 12 volt system I replaced and fitted probably five or six weeks prior. The new control hub's just arrived. I'm halfway through installing it now. Let's see how we go. Uh, I've got the old control hub inside and got that packaged. Gonna send that back and hopefully the manufacturers look after the warranty. So connected up exactly the same. Got my negative wire from my battery coming into this block or to this bar here the negative terminals positive coming from the battery into the positive bar uh, negatives for the lights and any auxiliary switches i've got and then the positives coming into the back of the switches here so that's exactly the same as i had it set up before i've just got to connect the terminals to the battery uh, and then connect up the uh, alternator and also the solar input and we should get the uh, amps going into the battery so the battery is now connected i'm just going to cable tie this up and tidy it up the solar panel is connected these ones are just like my fridge and auxiliaries and that so i'm not worried about them solar is connected and i've got positive input 
which is what I didn't have before. What I'll do now is disconnect the solar input. Now I haven't fixed this panel on properly just yet. It's just sitting there. I want to just check a few things. My alternator input. And what I'll do now is start the motor and we'll have a look at the um, smart shunt. So you can see there, alternator's working. Let's go and have a look at the smart shunt. Plus 34 amps. The car's been running for five minutes. Uh, this indicator's already telling me 100%, uh, 14 volts. The new unit's in, it's working, and I'm happy. So I'll be able to get to Cape York and uh, enjoy this adventure. So in regards to where I'm disappointed and the frustration that I felt, I've worked for a global uh, manufacturer, so I understand that things break down. I did 15 years of uh, service work for that company and would face all sorts of customers that would be really pissed off or those that would just understand. Where my issue was is that it was that uncertainty, I suppose. Um, send the unit back, we will test it. Two or three weeks, we can't guarantee a time frame. Get another unit out to you. And there's no guarantee that I would have the new unit by the time I needed to travel. What I think the company needs to understand is that these are used by people who do travel and who are traveling. So if you're remote and you have the same sort of issue, you're not in a position that you can wait two, three, four weeks for a response. It's something that needs to be fixed and it's fixed as soon as possible. So what I'd recommend the company do is probably have some service agents or points of contact uh, in each state. And even if that means that the owner of the product has to drive there, such as Sydney, Brisbane, Cairns, uh, Melbourne, their authorised uh, inspection point uh, or technician can look at it and say, yep, it's faulty or no, it's not faulty, it's user error. That way, the problem can be forwarded quite quickly uh, and stress and anxiety, I suppose, can be reduced. It'd be a real positive, I think, for, the, for all companies. Anyway guys, it's now working. I'm gonna package up the old one, uh, send it off, and look forward to the response from the company. The new control hub um, took about a week or so to get delivered to me. I fitted it up straight away, ran it for a week, and it was working fine. So now I'm only probably a week before I head off to Cape York trip. Around early August, iTech World contacted me by email and advised that they were refunding me on the original control hub. The unit was still fully operational now um, and I'm getting ready to go to Cape York. So the Hilux is fully loaded and head off for the adventure. It's been in the uh, making for 12 months, heading off to Cape York. Day three, I think it was, uh, we're up near Charters Towers. Had to restock a few groceries and that. And again, I noticed that the um, smart shunt indicator or display board percentage was from memory down 70% or something. And we'd been driving for three days in a row, six hours at a time. So there was no reason why the percentage was that low. Is it going now? No, you've got minus uh, 7.8. Um, lights changed. Oh, no, One of the followers, um, Tim, had already offered up his property to us to stay at. And I was at the thought that um, the DC DC charger wasn't charging again and I may have to divert off to Cairns to go and buy a different brand. 
Thankfully, Tim is a authorized installer with iTech World um, and said, just come out to my place, we'll have a look at it for you. So there was enough amp hours left in the battery that the fridge and the freezer could still run and we managed to get to Tim's property. Tim spent a bit of time on it, had a look at my installation work and then put a uh, clamp meter on the positive lead going back to the battery. Uh, we ran the car and Tim confirmed that the DC to DC charger was not working. Right now guys, this has really pissed me off. Um, I'm up at Mariba, heading up to the tip, the control hub, the DC to DC, second one has failed as well. Um, thankfully, Tim, the guy who's put us up uh, for tonight, is actually a service agent for iTech World uh, and solar 12 volt installer. He's had a look at it. I haven't done nothing wrong. Um, we've got meters going and now we've got it on a generator. 40 amp DC, DC, um, second one in eight weeks now, faulty. So I'm gonna return it and I'll come up with a, a new setup once I get back home. Tim's uh, got a few spare DC, DCs. He's gonna wire one in for me to get us out of trouble so we can enjoy the rest of this trip. When I get home, the control hub's coming out and I'll change it to something else. Cheers, guys. So, rang uh, iTech World and advised them and their answer was, when you get back from your holiday, just send it back to us. So this was gonna cause me a bit of trouble because I still had four or five weeks of my holiday to go. Um, and without a charger, I'd have no refrigeration, no lights, um, and the holiday would have finished there and then. Thankfully, Tim had a couple of spare DC to DC chargers, uh, and he wired a Red Arc 25 amp one in for me. So we still had the original control hub with the 40 amp DC to DC um, charger on it. So what we came up with was to disconnect that, put the Red Arc one up here in the roof, and then just use the power inlets so that we could energize or charge the battery. Now that worked perfectly. It got me through the rest of the trip, it got me home, and it's also been in use for the last four or five weeks since I've been home, and the battery's running at 100%. So when I got home, I contacted uh, iTech World again to get a return authority so that they could pay for the freight, which they did in both cases. Um, packaged it up and returned it. Now, I was frustrated with them, I'll be honest with you. Um, a lot of time and effort had gone into, you know, planning the headboard and setting it up the way it was. So I ended up buying another control hub off them but this time without the DC to DC assembly, because overall, the product itself or the control hub, I'm actually happy with. And as I said, I set up the whole headboard to suit that. I wasn't gonna go and pull the whole headboard out again and redesign it around another setup. So as you can see, got another uh, iTech World control hub in there but it doesn't have the uh, DC to DC charger on it. I am buying another uh, brand, and what I'll do is I'll mount that uh, on the face there and wire it up as per what iTech had it originally anyway. So, so it'll be just a different uh, DC to DC charger. As I said, this is just my personal experience with them, um, and I was frustrated, I'll be honest with you. I've worked for a global manufacturer so I understand things break down um, and you have warranty issues. My issue with them is, or was, and probably still is, these units that we buy are purchased so that we can travel and be off grid. Now, if they break down, um, I personally think that it's unacceptable that you're told you have to wait two, three, four weeks to get an answer. And 
the component has to be sent back to Western Australia at your expense. Now I understand also that things break down or things may be faulty due to poor installation. My answer to that or possible solution for these companies is to have authorised service agents at various parts around the country. Now whether that's Cairns, Brisbane, Sydney, um, down on the border somewhere and in Melbourne, one in Adelaide, one in Northern Territory, where the consumer, if they're prepared to, and if they need their unit fixed or replaced, they could drive to um, and get that authorised service agent to look at it and say, yep, the unit's faulty, bang here, replace it, job done. Or, yes, the unit's faulty, but it's because of your installation and you're going to get charged for it. That way the consumer, us, the user, could continue on our journey. It's unacceptable to me to think that, for instance, Cape York trip, I would have had to either cancel my trip and come home, or go to a paid site somewhere and recharge my battery through 240 volts for two or three weeks. And then up at Cape York, you haven't got that sort of option where you can just go to a campground and have 240 volts sort of at various places. So some likes and dislikes um, of the system. I like the functionality of it and that everything can be done and it's a do-it-yourself project basically. If you've got any idea of some wiring, um, yeah, there's nothing difficult in doing this. The fact that you know, all your switches are in one spot, uh, your SIGI and your um, USB connectors, recharging points are all together. I like the control hub for that reason. One issue that I'm having, and I noticed another YouTuber um, say it as well, the display panel on here doesn't always marry up with the display panel on the smart shunt. I'll just put a couple of photos now. So I did speak to iTech World about that and they sent me an email on how to calibrate each um, the display panel and also your smart shunt. You still get a variation. Um, it's not a big variation, but I'm not sure which one is more accurate, whether it's this little display panel on the control hub or whether it's the smart shunt display. So that's just one minor thing, but being the fact that they're both working together, they should be both reading the same voltage and should be very accurate. Obviously, um, the 40 amp DC to DC charger. Um, everything else at this stage, I'm pretty happy with. Now, I will be fitting a new uh, DC to DC charger in the coming weeks, so look out for that one. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope this one's helped you. As I said, this was just my personal experience. Um, Drop us a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit that notification bell. There'll be another video coming out shortly. Cheers guys. Thanks for watching.